Hello, welcome to the Flavoners podcast today. I'm with Daryl Vidal. Hi, Daryl. Thanks for being here. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. So, pandemic wise, I'm still here. How about you? <laughs> Are you staying safe? Yeah, we're on lockdown at the moment, so keeping as yeah. safe as I can. So, yeah, good. We're just coming out of it. Oh, cool. That's good. That's good to a yeah. progress. <laughs> um, so I want to start off because you have a karate background. So, what attracted sure. you to karate as a kid? Um, well, uh, I think. I think when you're growing up uh, around uh, other Asian people in Southern California, uh, there's a tendency to uh, uh, gravitate. Uh, and some, some people in my family uh, were, or other friends of our family who are also Filipino uh, were familiar with uh, Eskrima. Yeah. So that was my kind of my first exposure to anything. Uh, and then soon after that, my, my older brother started taking karate uh, mm. with, uh, with a teacher here. Oh, cool. Uh, and then, so just from there, we moved, uh, and then I started taking regular classes through our Parks and Recreation Department. In oh, that's cool. So, yeah, so I was probably, you know, 10, 12 years old, uh, and then watching all the Kung Fu movies. That came yeah. Out, you know, Bruce Lee and everything. Oh, that's cool. So how did you go about getting the role of Vidal on Karate Kid? Okay, so uh, it's kind of like a real Hollywood story because okay. um, I didn't I didn't audition for it or anything. Oh, wow. I was, in fact, I'm not an actor at all, right? Still not. Um, I was uh, doing a lot of karate competition uh, ah, okay. in, in the Los, Los Angeles area. Uh, and I had a kata that was very flashy. In fact, uh, you know what kata is, right? Kata is... Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a type of fight, isn't it? Well, it's a, yeah, you do it by yourself. It's like a floor routine that you do by yourself. Oh, okay, right, yeah. Uh, and then you compete with it. Yeah. Uh, they kind of have, they kind of talk about it in Karate, in karate Kid 3, but uh, in in karate, you have a bunch of stuff that you have to learn. Yeah. Uh, you know, self-defense, fighting techniques, and then one of them is kata, where, you know, you do uh, moves kind of in sequence. Oh, so that was a, a competition that I did a lot of yeah. uh, in the 80s. And so I was at a tournament. And I had won the kata division at the tournament. Oh, cool! Uh, I was getting ready to um, put on our sparring gear because uh, you know you usually do the kata and then you do the sparring. Yeah. Uh, and this guy comes up to me and says, "How would you like to be in a movie?" Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, it, it really happened like that. Wow! Next thing you know, I'm talking to uh, uh, the director. Yeah. Uh, of the movie, who happened to be the director of Rocky, also. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. So he was at the tournament and he had seen me. Uh, and they, that was how it happened. They, they asked me to come and, and be part of the movie. And yeah. uh, I, I would play uh, a tournament competitor. And then uh, next thing I know, they're also uh, asking me to do the crane kick. Oh, cool. So are you right to go into how you came up with the technique for the crane kick? You want me to go about that? Is that what you said? Yeah, we built because you sort of came up with the technique for the crane kick, didn't you? So we'd be able to yeah. go into that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a debate out there uh, whether, you know, I could have uh, created the, the kicking, but the kicking is kind of the standard double jump kick that almost yeah. every karate style has yeah. as something where they, they, they pump one leg and then they kick with the other leg. It's a fake you know, yeah. uh, or whatever you want it to be. <clears throat> but when uh, we did it for the, for the, uh, the movie, uh, the writer had said, oh, you're going to be standing with on one leg with your arms outstretched oh okay <laughs> and i'm like well why why would you ever do that <laughs> they say because it's a crane technique <laughs> so i'm like okay i better keep my mouth closed and you know <laughs> do this so now i'm i'm doing the jump kick yeah uh and and they actually uh the writer uh robert mark came and actually had written or had explained to me that you would stand on one leg like you know, the guys back there in your, your background. Yeah, of course. Uh, you would jump and kick, and then you would land back on that same leg because the... Oh, okay. One, one idea was that if the leg is injured, you don't you can't land on it. Yeah. So um, that would be a very difficult move, especially from standing still. And it of was course. something that I couldn't really do. So I kind of told them, I said, look, we can do this kick, this double jump kick, uh, and it works fine. It's not really a double jump kick anymore. It's a leg up yeah. kick. Uh, <clears throat> front kick and so I convinced him that was the way to do it 
uh, and then they said, well, you have to do something with your hands. You can't just stand like oh, this. Oh, okay. So I said, okay, well, what if I stand in this guard, dip down low, and then come up high, and oh, then do the kick? And yes. that's, that's what I kind of created. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and even the director, uh, before he passed away, told, you know, and, and called me the grain kick inventor. Ah, okay. And, and Ralph has, has said it too, so, you know. <laughs> Awesome. Whatever, you know, that's yeah. what I did. That's the, what happened. <laughs> oh, nice. Was yeah. there a reason why you were asked specifically to do the crane kick? Um, I think they had originally, high, uh, you know, gotten uh, uh, Umio Demora, you know, oh. Demora Sensei, and he yeah. was doing all the, um, uh, the, the, state, uh, the stunt fighting for Miyagi. Yeah. But I don't think they envisioned him doing the crane kick because. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I, I actually, now that you're asking the question, I don't know why why it wasn't him to do it. I, okay. I don't question whether or not he could have done it, but uh, they asked me to do it, and they yeah. actually, you know, put uh, you know a little uh, body suit on and you know the head gear. Oh, cool. I could do it now, but I had to put. <laughs> They had the bald head thing on and go out there and do the crane kick. So yeah, because uh, yeah, that that came about after I was kind of recruited for the movie. Oh, cool. Yeah, because you do the beach scene. Is it you who does the beach scene? Who's on the yes. log? All right, cool. Yes. I thought it was. Yeah. Oh, you, know, nice. you hear the music. And yeah. Daniel looks over, and then it's, it's Miyagi walking towards the the, the pilings. Yeah. Out of the, the, the ground, uh, and then when it cuts to the guy, that's me. Oh, what is that? Why it's such a distant shot? So obviously, yeah, actually, right. there's there's two shots. Yeah, you'll see one one distance and then yeah. one, another one. But yeah, they're both long shots. Oh, but, wow. Uh, so did you have to teach Ralph the uh, kick? Yeah, yeah. After we kind of worked it out, then we showed Ralph, and Ralph was also working with Pat Johnson. So yeah, just from there, he, he you know, it's not all that difficult. But uh, yeah, I can imagine. But yeah, it's, yeah. oh, <laughs> awesome, nice. Yeah. So, do you have your own karate school, or is that? Yes. So, um, I've pretty much been training all my life ever since then. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. after uh, I moved here, where I live now, Marietta, California, I, yeah. I moved here 30 years ago, almost 31 oh, wow. years ago. I was already married, had kids. So, uh, yeah. I started teaching here through the Parks and Rec Department. You know, that's like our community. Yeah. Uh, our city's uh, recreation, uh, and so I've been here the longest, actually. <laughs> oh, cool! My wife, so we, uh, uh, she teaches dance, and I teach karate. But yeah. yeah, so I've been teaching here that whole time. Um, I've been promoted over the last, you know, thirty years because my instructor uh, is uh, our grandmaster. He's ten three, yeah, and he, he's still around. And so back in twenty thirteen, I, I actually got. Uh, ranked all the way up to 10th degree as well. Your 10th degree black belt? Yeah. Wow. What sort of training does it... Sorry, what sort well, of training goes into that? It's it's really about, after the first, you know, testing for the Shodan, the first degree, Yeah. for us, it's continued teaching and training. Oh, so okay. if you're still teaching and training after four years or so, they'll rank you. If you stop training, stop teaching, yeah. then, you know, then you kind of disappear off the list. But... Uh, wow. You know, I I have never stopped. So every four years, you know, all my instructors black belts. He's got over a hundred of them. Yeah. You know, they they come up their ranking. You know, I'm the senior one, so I I get pushed up the ranking as well. Wow. So that's how that's how it works for us. You know. Yeah. Uh, you always hear different people's uh, stories about how they uh, degrees uh -oh. they have. So. <laughs> I don't even like to talk about it at half the time because people are like, oh, 10th degree. Uh, I've got a 10th degree here and a 10th degree in here, 5th degree here. It's like, okay. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. I've just been training for, you know, forever, basically. Yeah. And I also teach uh, uh, Filipino stick fighting, yeah, uh, Filipino martial arts. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I spoke to William Christopher Ford the other day, and he's like yeah. third. Fred. Is he third degree, is it? Or oh, fifth degree, is it? You know, well, yeah, I don't, I don't know what his ranking is. Yeah. Well, how did you come up? Because you've got a good relationship with him and um, Sean Kanan, haven't you? And so, yeah, yeah. So, how did that come so about? William, William uh, and I used to compete together. So 
oh, we've cool. known each other even before the Karate Kid. Uh, uh-huh. So we're talking about, I'm, I think I'm two years older than him. So probably he was 15, I was 17. Yeah. Uh, and we used to compete against each other. Uh, and then um, and then I can, well, we, he, he told me the story about what I actually told him. Hey, I got a role in this movie coming out. Oh, yeah. And then, and they, and then after the movie, um, I didn't really see him as much. Uh, he stopped competing or I stopped or, you know, we just weren't seeing each other very yeah. much. But then next thing I know, he's got the role in the Karate Kid 3. And it's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, right. William. Yeah, so that's, that's how I know him. And it's funny because, you know, social media, um, good and bad, I, we hadn't talked in, you know, 25, 30 years yeah. until, you know, we connected, reconnected on Facebook. And it was like, you know, man, I, you know, 30 <laughs> years, I know how long I've known this guy. Uh, wow. So that it was really great. Now you asked me about Sean. Yeah, I, I only met Sean. Um, I think about five years ago at a at a Karate Kid event, uh, and that was the first time I had met him. Oh, cool! Uh, and it was like, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, because he's also into um, uh, daytime television, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you know, he's kind of kind of a big deal. Uh, and then uh, I would see him every time we would do a, a, a karate kid or a martial arts event. We'd bump into each other and yeah. uh, we became friends. And then uh, he actually asked me about doing some training in, in Filipino martial arts. So I've been oh, nice. helping him with that too. Yeah, Awesome. Uh, are you still in contact with any of the other people from the original karate kid? Yeah. Uh, Ron uh, Thomas, who played Bobby Brown. Oh, he yeah, he's, he, lit- he's karate as well, isn't he? Uh, yeah, jujitsu. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, jujitsu. And so, yeah, we've uh, we've connected, and uh, he lives near me. Uh, you know, within within you know half an hour or so. And so oh, cool. We'll get together yeah. every now and then. Awesome, nice. Yeah. Uh, so, in your career, what's arguably been your own personal biggest achievement? Uh, you mean like in karate and martial arts, or outside of that, or? Uh, within, I, have lot, I have a lot of different things going on in my life. <laughs> uh, we'll say within martial arts and without, out of martial arts. So one one of each. So okay, well, um, I mean, within martial arts, I think you know, being the guy that did the crane kick is something that I almost don't know how to deal with, right? Because for <laughs> for many years, nobody even knew. Of course, yeah. You yeah. know, except for my friends and family. Yeah. Uh, and then um, after about 20 years, it actually, there, there was proof that it was me because there was no proof. It wasn't listed anywhere. Oh, okay. In cast or anything else. Uh, and so in, in the, on the 20 year anniversary, they came out with a DVD with, uh, with special stuff. And yeah. uh, Ralph and, and, and Pat Marita uh, and the director uh, had, had uh, where, they, where they talked in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, movie yeah commentary yeah uh, and when the crane kick came up they they both said oh there's daryl remember daryl he was <laughs> did the crane kick blah 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 i'm like hey there you go <laughs> it, it's, i can prove it now but uh and then with uh, um you know so after kind of the first research that happened after the 30 years of the uh, anniversary of the crane yeah kick, which would have been what 2014 or yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. 2014, um, with 30 year anniversary, they go to another event where they're, they're doing these reunions, and I start to see, you know, Ron and Billy and Ralph. Yeah. So yeah, I see them every now and then. Oh, nice, cool, and, awesome. And then with Cobra Kai, I'm crazy. Yeah. Uh, so do you watch Cobra Kai? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, we watched it. You know, I because first of all. I heard the rumors early on, you know, before it came out, it was like, oh, yeah, we're doing a remake, you know, Will, Will Smith and all this. It's like, okay. Oh, Next yeah. thing I know, I get, uh, I get an email and they were actually contacting me uh, because they want to use some of my footage from Oh, Party Kid 1. And yeah. I have to sign a waiver and sign an disclosure and stuff like that. So, so I'm like, yeah, well, they're, they're doing it and they know about me. Yeah. You know, and so I, I, I send them uh I send them some pictures. I send them a link of a video of me doing some sparring, yeah. uh, knocking a guy out. And then I uh, I also told them I look like Miyagi now. So. 
trying to give them all these ideas. Uh, but yeah, uh, so my wife, when it came out on uh, YouTube, my wife and I watched it and really enjoyed it. Yeah. I think the writers are, are brilliant. I like what they've done with the whole, you know, Daniel versus Johnny thing. Yeah, it is fantastic. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it is. So yeah, I watched season two, waited with everybody else and really enjoyed season two. Yeah. So, oh, season three was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. Awesome. Um, so if given the chance, would you like to be part of it? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, without, you know, it's without saying, in fact, uh, you know, people say, oh, what would the backstory be? And I'm like, well, it could be the, what really happened with Vidal, you know, because yeah. Vidal was, that was me. They used my name, right? <laughs> so uh, I've, I've been teaching for 30 years. And so, you know, they can say, hey, there's been all, he's still there. He's still with Locust Valley. Maybe I bring students to the tournament or something. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so what are your hopes going forward in the future in regards to your personal life, martial arts, anything else out of that? Yeah, you know, I, it's, a, it's a good question. I, I don't have... You know, specific goals, just like they talk about, you know, getting a 10th degree black belt. It's like, oh, wow, did you set out to do that? Yeah. Uh, and the answer is no. You know, you never really say, hey, I'm going to, you do say, I'm going to get a black belt because, of course, yeah. you know, it's a very tangible, you know, something that you do. But you don't think, oh, I'm going to stick with it so long that I'll eventually be a 10th degree black belt. Yeah. You don't really set out to do it. But, but you do, uh, it does become a part of your life. And thus, you know, you kind of, can't get out of it. It's almost like a yeah. trap here because I've got these students. You know, I got I have class tonight that I have to zoom. Yeah, zoom exactly. Yeah, Friday tonight. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think I think what I want is to have a, a long, healthy, happy life because uh, my instructor he's still teaching. He's still around. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, I, I can't I can't move like I uh, like I can't jump like I used to, but I can yeah. still you know still spar. Uh, and uh, you know, the stick biting stuff also keeps me very, very light. So that's oh, cool. that's what I would hope for. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's good to hear. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what was your relationship like with um, William Zapka? Because obviously, you did obviously the scene with him. So, what was it like working with him in the? Yeah, fighters? you know what? He, it, it it was great because one, he was a real nice guy, and he always oh. and he is, and every time I see him, he treats me like you know we're old friends. Oh, cool. um, he. Um, He's very athletic, obviously. He he didn't train in the martial arts at the time, but All right. yeah, I believe he said he, he wrestled. But um, when we did, when I was recruited for the Credit Kid in 1983, um, we trained for six weeks in the summer. So we would all get together yeah. for, you know, kind of in the afternoon and train. So it would be me and the Cobra Kai guys, you know, Ralph, uh, not Ralph, but Billy, uh, uh Ron, Bobby Brown, uh, Tony, Chad, oh, yeah. and and we would train like a class, uh, and so I got to know them all fairly well. Oh, cool, uh, nice. Billy, and, and then so Billy, uh, you know, anytime we had time, uh, we would we would hang out, uh, maybe at the beach or something when we were all there at the beach as well. So uh, he's a very good guy. I mean, really nice guy. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, like I said, he was, he's pretty athletic. So I told him when we were choreo choreographing the fight, you know, I'll do this, you do that. You know, I might, I might get close to you here. I might hit you here. You can hit me here. Blah blah blah. Because, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not afraid of getting hit. Obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so from from the stunt style standpoint, I don't have to fake it or anything. But yeah, you know, you can't hit the actors. They they can't spar. And they can't risk injury. So. Oh wow! You can't hit them. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be really careful when you're you're doing these choreographed fight scenes. But uh, yeah, oh, so wow. we so the fight scene that you see yeah. in, uh, in, in uh, me fighting Johnny is fully choreographed it, from you know every kick, yeah. every move. None, none of it is like free form. So oh obviously. cool, yeah, that's awesome, cool. Um, so have you have you done any of acting roles then? Uh, no, you know I. Uh, qualify that but uh after that I, I think i auditioned for one movie after that and, and 
kind of didn't happen. So oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't pursue it. So I didn't really, but uh, uh, recently uh, I have been asked to do like, you know, an appearance here, an appearance there. So yeah. you never know my, what might pop up. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so yep. last question, have you got anything in the works, like in personal projects or anything going forward? Yeah, actually, I have a lot of stuff. Uh, if you want to, if you if you're interested in, in not necessarily martial arts stuff, okay, cool. Uh, but other things that are, are going on with Daryl. Uh, <laughs> one thing is, um, yeah, I have a, a regular career. So in my my regular career, I'm a, a technology uh, person for schools. Oh, so nice. I do, you know, I work with schools. Yeah, and uh, I'm doing, you know large scale uh, planning of uh, technology systems. Yeah, you know, like security systems or, uh, you know, uh, emergency communication systems, voice over IP, those type of things. Oh, cool. It's all IT stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I do that, and but I also write books in that area. In fact, here's one of my books right here. It's, oh, it's cool, nice. most recent one. I have, I've written, uh, I think, six or seven books uh, oh. about technology and yeah. education. Uh, so that's kind of my, my one thing. And I'm working on a new one. Uh, and the new one is about... Uh, curriculum and COVID, you know, the impact oh, of COVID. So nice. Yeah, it's very timely. And so I'm working on that right now. Yeah. Um, I have another book uh, that, let me see if I have a copy of it. I don't have one nearby, but I have another book uh, that is unavailable on Amazon. It's called Backstage. Okay. Uh, and it's a, a memoir of a musician. Oh, cool. uh, and this musician used to play trombone for Frank Sinatra. Oh, nice. And Elvis Presley. Oh, yeah, cool. And Elvis Presley. Awesome. So, you know, I met him in a, um, at a golf tournament, and we started, he starts telling all these stories about yeah. Elvis and Frank Sinatra. And, you know, first, you know, it's hard to believe that someone, you know, been around these guys. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he was. I mean, he was, uh, you know, he, he played the trombone. So uh, I wow. told him by the end of that day, I said, Marty, his name is Marty Harrell. I said, you got to write a book about these stories. I mean, yeah. these, nobody's ever heard these stories, you know. Of course, it's not yeah. like, uh, you know, something gets in the news. Uh, so uh, he says, yeah, everybody just does that, but blah, blah, blah. So I told him by the end of that day, I said, I'm going to write your book. So I did. I, I, I did all these interviews with him, spent a bunch yeah. of time with him, and then wrote this book. Uh, it's called, like I said, it's on Amazon. It's called Backstage. Okay. Uh, greatest Entertainers of the 20th century and it just got optioned uh, by uh, a producer to be turned into a, a movie so, oh wow yeah hopefully like, that thing happens uh, comes to fruition and uh, we'll, we'll see uh, a full full-length movie coming awesome that's really cool to hear yeah. that's one yeah awesome so there are a couple of things that that i have on the side that's uh, good to hear good to hear that's yep. um so i've asked you everything i want to so okay. thank you yeah uh, appreciate it so you say you don't do martial arts? I took um, I'm going to Taekwondo. Okay. I did that when I was about 11. I just <laughs> never stuck to it. I'm more of a football fan. <laughs> so, so, That's okay. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. But yeah. Um, okay. It's really cool learning more about you and your okay. career. So. Well, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. And if I could just plug my, uh, my social media, uh, because I am pretty reachable, just like... Uh, yeah. So uh, on what is it on Instagram? I'm Rock Breaker Boy. Yep. Uh, on uh, uh, Facebook, I'm Vidal Kempo, uh, and uh, Twitter, I think I'm Kempo Vidal. So just awesome. use Kemp, Kempo Vidal or Vidal Kempo, and, and find me, and I'll I'll talk to you. Awesome. Thanks for that. Um, okay. Yeah. I appreciate you giving your time today. Oh, it's been amazing. Yeah. So absolutely. Um, yeah. So have a good day, and okay. Towards you down the line. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you.